watching and in this video tutorial I'm going to teach you how to use Form Ranger as a response limiter in Google Forms. Now personally I use Form Ranger to limit the number of responses that users can select when filling out a workshop registration form. Meaning that if I have a workshop that takes place in a specific classroom in our district and I only have 30 seats in that classroom if more than 30 people sign up that's going to be problematic so what I want to do is set it up so that as people fill out the form once those registrations reach 30 in a session then that option will fall off of the form and that's exactly what Form Ranger can do now you do have to understand a little bit about formulas in Google Sheets but if you don't understand that I'm going to teach you how to do that and you can pretty much mimic exactly what I'm going to show you here so let's get started in my Google form as you can see here I've got two questions and allowing people to sign up for workshops in session one which takes place at 8 a.m. and session two which takes place at 9 a.m. for instance um, I have not put any options in here because we're gonna put those on the response sheet and then add the formulas so that Form Ranger can do its work. So let's go over to the response menu first and I'm gonna click on the create spreadsheet icon, this little green Google Sheets icon here to create our response sheet. I'll click create and it's gonna open that sheet in a new tab and as you can see down here at the bottom we have form responses one okay that's the form where or that's the tab in Google Sheets where our responses will come in as you can see at the top here I have a session one header where questions from that first question will come in and a session two header where the responses for question two or session two will come in I'm not gonna touch that part of the worksheet but I'm gonna make some new tabs here that will help me as I go through and have Form Ranger limit responses. But Form Ranger has to have something to look at to see what needs to be limited based on the number of responses that have come in. So that's where this part comes in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some headers up here. The first header is going to be Session. And you can make that name arbitrary. It does not matter. Um, you can use whatever you want to. It could be workshops. It could be um, t-shirts maybe you're trying to limit a t-shirt order because you've only got a certain number of a certain size in however you want to do it but the other three columns are what matters um, column B here needs to be count where it's going to basically list the number of that item in column A that has already been selected in your form column C is going to be your limit basically you telling it this is the number where I want to stop receiving responses and then column D which is going to be your filter and that filter is going to be a formula that looks at the count in column B for the item listed in column A and compare it to the limit and determine what shows up in the form okay I know all of that doesn't make sense right now but it will as we go through so let's say for session one I have a Google Forms workshop we're going to skip over count for now and I'm going to go straight to the limit because that is one of the things that Form Ranger is going to look at. So let's say for instance for the Google Forms workshop I have 30 seats and you know sometimes you'll have multiple people filling out the form at the same time and you might get duplicate responses coming in at the same time for the same item so you might even lower your limit to say 28 but in this case I'm going to keep it easy and I'm going to call it 30. Okay. Now, for this one, what we have to do is tell Form Ranger where to look in our form responses, which is this first tab. We need to tell it to look in session one. Okay, so we're gonna rename this tab down here that says sheet two. We're gonna rename that session one. Okay, and we're gonna have to tell it to look in session one, and we're gonna give it a formula to say count if Okay, and we're going to tell it to count in form responses one. Okay, we're looking in column, in this case, B. Okay, 
So session one is column B. So in, in form responses one, look in, first of all, we have to put an exclamation after that, and then look in column B, okay? So for the entire range of column B, we're looking for the item that's listed in this cell right here, Google Forms. Um, we're gonna call that cell A2, okay? And then hit enter after you've entered that formula. And basically it's gonna say zero right now because what it's doing is it's looking in form responses one to see if anyone has already requested Google Forms. Right now, no one has, so it's set to zero, okay? Meaning zero people have requested that workshop out of 30. Now the filter is what the Google Form looks at to determine if that option still needs to exist in the question. So this is important that you get this right as well. We're gonna put a formula here, equals filter. In this case, we're looking in A2, and we want to determine if what's in column B2 is less than what's in column C2, okay? Okay, so basically it's looking here and the logic is that if this number here in column B, the count, which is the number of people that have requested this workshop is larger than the limit, then it will no longer allow that option to show up in the question. Hopefully that makes sense to you, but you'll see it in just a minute. Now that we have our formulas in place, we can add other options. So let's say we have a, a workshop on YouTube, and we have a workshop on Sheets, and we have a workshop on Slides, okay? So now um, we can copy down that formula from what's in B2 to the other cells, okay? And if you wanna check it, just to make sure that the logic is working, this is for uh, A2, A3, A4, A5, so it is working. We wanna use the same amounts on our limits, so I'm gonna copy this and then just paste, 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 okay? And then remember there is a formula here in cell D2 for our filter, so we wanna copy down that formula. And as we do that, it's going to be looking at these items here comparing the count with the limit and determining if it still shows up in the question. So as we copy down, you'll see those responses showing up the way they do here, all right? So let's go back to our workshop registration form and let's open up Form Ranger. Now I don't currently have Form Ranger on here, so I do have to add it. So I'm gonna to go to the three dots on my Google Form and click Add-ons. And let's go find Form Ranger. And here's Form Ranger. So now that the add-on is here, you'll see this little puzzle piece at the top. I'll click on Form Ranger and click Start. And Form Ranger will load over here in this pop-up on the far right. As it's loading, you're going to see your question list show up. And in this first question, session one, which is what I've already set up on my Google Sheet. I want to populate that from a range and I have to tell it which range that we want to populate from. So if I hit the plus sign for a new range, it's going to allow me to search for the sheet where those responses are. So here it is, workshop registration, and I'll click select. Now in here, you need to tell it which range this is coming from. Now form responses one, that's not the tab we want that's where your answers are going to be coming in as people fill out your form. We want to populate this question from the tab called session one that we just created. Then the column header that we need to use is the filter, okay? Remember the reason for this is that the count is how many people have already selected that item, the limit is how many we want to cut off at, and the filter is the cell that we populate from based on how many have selected versus how many seats are left. So filter is the one we'll choose here, okay? After you've done that, it's showing that the filter items that show in that range are 
forms, YouTube sheets and slides in this case. I'll click next and then you can give this range a name and I'm just going to call it session one. Okay, you do, It does not matter what you call this as long as it is unique for each range on this option that we're using for this worksheet. I'll save and populate. You'll see the wheel spinning over here and then when it's done you'll see that the items that you listed on your filter for session one now populate your question. Okay. Now I wanted to show you that first because one thing you don't want to do when you're setting up your form is pre-fill out your answers. You want it to populate the answers from everything that you've set up in the sheet and that is important. You'll notice that on session two all I did was fill out the title of the question and then the description. I have not put anything here and that's why it was that way from the start. So let's go through that one more time. I'll show you how it works and then we'll be done and we'll be ready to go. So I'll add a sheet and we're going to call this one session two. Okay. And I've sped this section up since we've already seen this, but if you want to slow it down, feel free. Now, the next thing to do is just test your worksheet out and see if it's working. So I'm going to go up here to the little preview button and I'm going to fill out my form and I'm going to choose a couple of workshops here and click submit. Okay, and I can submit another response if I want to. Okay, and now if I go back and look at my response sheet, I can see under form responses the two items that I filled out. And if I look in session one, I can see that for session one, someone has selected Google Forms, someone has selected slides. We haven't exceeded our limit yet, and so those items will still show up. A another good way to test this is to change your limits. And so if I change these limits to two, for instance, and then go back to my form and update the question list so it has those new limits set up, then when I test out my worksheet again and submit some more responses, uh, as I do that and as I reach my limit, they'll start to fall off. Now one thing that you may want to do that is an additional feature, if you're wanting to test this and you want to make sure that it's working the way you want it to, you might want to tell Form Ranger to auto repopulate the questions every time someone submits a form and then click update okay and so as we do that um, that helps so that if you have many people filling out the form very quickly it it can take into account when we've reached that limit okay so I filled it out again and I want to choose Google Forms and slides uh, to test this out so that you can see what we're doing so Google Forms and we'll do Google Forms again Okay, and as we go back over here and update question list, you'll notice now slides has an NA next to it because we have reached that limit. Three people signed up, the limit was two. It happened so fast that it couldn't accommodate for it quickly enough and one snuck in. That is one of the reasons that I sometimes lower my limit a little bit below what I would normally allow. So if I would allow 30, I might set it at 28, just in case responses are coming in quickly. Well, hopefully that explanation of Form Ranger as a response limiter on Google Forms kind of helps you. I know I use it a lot for workshop registrations in our district, and hopefully it's something you can use too. If you have questions, uh, please check out my website at www.techiecoach.com, and we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,